What's up guys? Welcome back. Here's a Super Avante. I'm going to repair a couple of things. Well, one thing that's broken and make a couple of changes. I bought these things. As well as a slipper clutch set. So I'm going to go ahead and install these. On the one I also lost a screw and nut here. So I'll have to replace that. It's super easy to do this. If you haven't seen any of my other videos, I suggest you go watch them so you get to know this car a little bit better. But anyways, let's show you how easy it is to take off this front portion to get the diff so I can replace this T-nut. And how to get off the rear diff so I can replace the T-nut. And also, even easier, top cover. And this is where the slipper clutch resides. Very easy to get to today. Let's get started. Disconnect this suspension here. Maybe not. You gotta remove a bunch of screws in here. And then these two over here. One and two. Screws, but it's not hard to take them out at least. It's all open now. It's uh, yeah, all open. I'm gonna go ahead and take that diff out. One diff. Okay, so these are the foam bits that came out of my drive shaft, the uh, drive cup. And it looks like they get destroyed in there. Uh, I'd, I'd say universals would definitely help fix this. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause this video maybe and go ahead and order those from my shop before I forget. Yeah. Okay, we're back. And uh, I went ahead and ordered universals. So don't worry about that. Okay. Okay, so I'm actually, looks like everything is exactly the same part. So the only difference is they've got some Loctite put on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and use only the nut some Loctite and I'll leave the rest as spare parts. Yeah, that's the correct thread. So I'm gonna get some blue Loctite out. That way I don't have to rebuild all the thrust bearings and the screws and whatever, because it does come with, comes with thrust bearing balls. Assuming you're re making a new one. Uh, I, I don't need to, this is still brand new. There's, uh, there's no need for that. So I'll say this is spare parts. Look. Permatex. I don't like to dip things in there. Because I don't want to introduce foreign oils in here as little as I, I would like to introduce foreign oils into my thread lock as little as possible. So I'll just take something semi-clean, wipe it off a bit. Dab some of that thread lock. And just turn it on the threads. Rub it into the thread so that I like to do, otherwise it'll just get stuck in the outside of the hole. That should be good. Plug it back in. Put this new T nut down. If you're taking a break, don't go too far. I share a few more thoughts with you at the end of this video. in these 
Because then it's even more difficult and takes more time to adjust these diffs. Okay, so the rear's a little different. I mean, because uh, Loxy's not different at all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight screws. The only thing I don't like is that I have to clean these every time, screw heads every time I uh, have to get at it because it's always packed with dirt. Also, the oil has emptied. You know what? Let's talk about this. The oil in the rear shocks have completely drained themselves. There's no oil uh, in the rear shocks whatsoever. So I'll have to fix that up and, and check it out. That's the only thing. When it flips, this wing takes a punishment. It's like sand wing. I would like a hard plastic wing myself. I get that it's not light, but I don't really care at my current level. Alright, let's get to work. This car drives really nice. It has a lot of steering compared to the other vehicles I've been bringing to that track. But what happened here? Is that a crack? <laughs> Did I crack the chassis? Serious gouge. Ooh, that's a bad gouge. Hmm. I don't like that. I don't like this. This rear is slapping the ground way too hard. That's terrible.
because of the slamming and the push of the, it's a, uh, it's peened the metal down. So it doesn't fit inside this crevice property anymore. All right, diff, these new nuts. Make sure to pay attention and note that if you're doing the slipper clutch upgrade, that the gearing comes in 48 pitch, which is not the same as what the Supervanti comes stock. So be sure to have 48 pitch pinion gears ready to use. Tamiya's instructions recommend using anywhere between a 16 tooth and 30 tooth pinion gear. Okay, so stock is 70 tooth, we're going up to 79. Stock pinion is 17. If I've gone up nine here, I want to go up nine there as well. So 17 plus nine is 26. So I'm going to use a 26 tooth pinion with a 79 tooth spur they give you. The reason why I gotta do that is it's a 48 pitch. So the slipper clutch set comes with different pitch in their stock setup, causing you to have to buy more stuff. Uh, 48 pitch is better overall anyway, but I'm a little disappointed they didn't keep it consistent. Either keep it all standard to me a pitch or go into 48 pitch. Make your decision. Don't make people go back and forth. Whatever. And that pretty much wraps up the video. I'm still waiting on sway bars. I'm now waiting on universals. And I'd like to get tires eventually, but I wanted to show you guys something here. I would recommend aluminum servo stays because as you can see, my plastic ones are moving here. Not that great. Everything else seems to be fine. I'd like to find the durability issues before I start upgrading this too much. The tires are definitely one area I would like to improve. I thought they'd be a lot softer, but I guess because instead of being round pin spike tires, they're actually square spike tires, which gives them a lot more side rigidity, uh, not allowing them to flex as much as the round pins, in my opinion. Uh, you can see here, I'm flexing them around and uh, they're not as flexy as the other ones I've got. So I would like some 
multi-pin, something soft, you know, some racing type of tire, I think that would really help this car out a lot. And keep in mind, if you're painting rims, they do chip. Uh, I don't mind it. I knew this was going to happen. I just wanted the initial beautiful pictures, and then I knew I was going to go bash this anyway. I'd also like back here, uh, behind the ESC, on top of the motor, Tamiya offers you a place to put a 20 millimeter fan, 20, 30 millimeter, something like that. It's perfect. So I'd like to get a fan in there. And that's really about it. It is getting very cold out, and I don't like running uh, plastics hard in the cold. So uh, 